the Acting Executive Director of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, Miria Levia Gutierrez. Okay, am I unmuted? There we go. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, before we get started, I wanted to introduce uh, Noma's stroll coordinator tonight and Inwood's very own Martin Collins, who has a special statement to share with us tonight, as always. Martin. Thanks, Naria, and welcome, everyone. Before acknowledging tonight's sponsor, we want to give a big shout out to two uptown folks who are joining us, Natalie Espino, community liaison for Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer's office, and Claudio Cabrera, the New York Times deputy off-platform director whose new book, E Tu Eres Dominicano, will debut later this year. Our thanks to Natalie and Claudio for joining us tonight. Our sponsor this evening is the Juan Pablo Duarte Foundation, located in the George Washington Bridge bus terminal on Fort Washington Avenue and West 179th Street. The foundation addresses cultural, civic, and academic needs of the largely low-income Northern Manhattan immigrant community of Washington Heights Inwood, and it is a conduit for cultural arts and educational opportunities celebrating the enduring legacy of Dominican heritage. The Juan Pablo Duarte Foundation has an art gallery on site at the bus terminal, and for the past 20 years, they have produced the hugely successful Juan Pablo Duarte Festival with over a quarter of a million people turning up every year on St. Nicholas Avenue, the first Saturday each June. We want to thank Laura Acosta, the executive director and founder of the Juan Pablo Duarte Foundation. And for more information on them, please visit their website, JPD foundation.org. Our thanks again to the Juan Pablo Duarte Foundation for sponsoring tonight's open studio with Gary Grant. Miriam? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Martin, and thanks to the Juan Pablo Duarte Foundation for your support. Hello, and thank you all for being here tonight. I really look forward to these Thursday nights, um, and it's so amazing to see that so many of you do as well. Um, to those who are joining us for the very first time, we welcome you and we hope you'll come back next week um, and the week after. Um, my name is Miria Leva Gutierrez and I am Acting Executive Director of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance. And I have the great privilege of introducing our weekly artists. Um, but before I do, I wanted to give thanks and mention that our program is supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council, as well as from Council Member Mark Levine and the West Harlem Development Corporation. Again, we remain so grateful for these funders who continue to see the value of art um, and see the value in what we do. Thank you. One last point, and this will likely be repeated more throughout the evening. Please answer our poll when it pops up uh, at the end of the evening. We are recording your comments, we're compiling them, and we're thinking here at NOMA about how we can incorporate them into our future programming. If you want to reach us through email, <clears throat> please do. We encourage you. And of course, sign up for our newsletter where we give you the lowdown on what we're up to. And finally, please feel free to enter your question for tonight's artist in the chat room. Um, and we'll try again this week. If you have a burning rapid fire question that you want to contribute um, for the end of the program, um, please feel free to include that as well. Um, but now uh, I am uh, happy to turn to tonight's artist. Born and raised in Detroit and based in West Harlem, Gary attended the College for Creative Studies in Detroit and Wayne State University, as well as the American College of Applied Arts in Atlanta, where he studied graphic communication and fine art. His works have been featured in both solo and group exhibitions throughout the United States. Gary is an abstract visual artist whose rhythmic large scale works combine a careful and dynamic selection of materials, color and texture, sometimes even multiple canvases. Early in his career, Gary became a master gilder, specializing in the restoration of antique period frames for leading framing companies. His expertise as a gilter joyfully makes its way into his works, which incorporate gold and silver, as well as copper leaf, adding depth, vitality, and an overall complexity to his compositions. Recently, Gary has also added the creation of life-size sculptures, works on handmade paper, and other three-dimensional objects to his practice. And tonight, Gary will be sharing with us a new body of work 
called the Fortification Series, which is inspired by and pays homage to his 2015 trip to Morocco. In these works, which are meticulously created out of handmade paper and canvas mixed media, Gary references the architectural ruins of Essaouira, as well as the archways and doors of the old Medina in Marrakech. And to tell us more about the series and about his process, I now introduce you to artist Gary Grant. You gotta take yourself off mute. Gary, you have to unmute yourself. You see the little red uh, microphone? Lower left corner of your screen, all the way in the lower left, where it says mute. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay, so uh, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> and also buttons. <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Gary Grant, as you know. Um, uh, so I'm, uh, you know, artist uh, and I've been here um, in West Harlem uh, for about two and a half years and um, so my wife and I we we, we purchased this home and, uh, and I managed to have a, a nice uh, and, and decent sized uh, studio space here in the basement here so uh, and so uh, it was sort of a great opportunity to now to kind of kind of kind of uh, you know produce more and, and engaging in, in larger works uh, now that you know sort of fully established with a full fledged studio for, uh, you know, for my clients that be able to come directly to me and get a chance to see some, you know, some of the new work. So, uh, so um, may I should just maybe get into uh, talking about uh, the fortification series and the handmade paper works. Um, so again, it all started, um, like I said about 2015, it was basically was, our, it was my, me and my wife's honeymoon, we decided to go to Morocco. And, uh, and so, uh, and so we flew to, to Morocco and to uh, Marrakesh and, and then, uh, you know, what was fascinating is just, uh, you know, coming off the plane and then coming into Marrakesh, obviously seeing the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the modern city on the outside, but they're not knowing that we're going to enter inside the old city. And so, uh, I think from, you know, entering into the old city, into the Medina, I think that was a, that was the start of the life, life changing moments uh, of witnessing sort of like history and just the level of, of craftsmanship and depth and talent uh, uh, throughout the whole Medina. So, uh, and so overall, it was just a absolutely, uh, I think again, for an artist to kind of go there, visually, it was, it was just mind blowing, uh, the amount of visual stimulation from, you know, from the, even the smallest details of, uh, of door knobs. Everything is, is well crafted, handcrafted, so well done, uh, extremely uh, uh, talented uh, artists and, and, and craftsmen uh, all around uh, the old Medina. And again, I think uh, I would assume that most of the people have been doing it for centuries and, uh, and then been passed on to, uh, to their generation. So it was just absolutely fantastic uh, opportunity to, uh, to take a trip like that and to come visit. And I will hope to, uh, to again, to explore other cities because there's just countless of, of um, you know, unique uh, visual uh, elements from all these different cities uh, in, in, uh, in Morocco. So. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Gary Grant and welcome to my uh, studio, my home studio. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna come down to the studio here. So let me just uh, let me just quickly show you around and just get a nice view of some of my larger works that's on canvas and some of the new pieces and some recent pieces on canvas there and of course this beautiful piece here that's on handmade paper. So 
So let me just get started with this group of works here. Now this is the series um, that I've been working on for the past two and a half years. So I call this series the, the Fortification Series, and um, and this all came out of of, of a trip my wife and I um, did several, a few years ago uh, to Morocco. Oh, the two cities we had had the pleasure of uh, visiting, uh, Marrakesh and Essaouira. So, um, uh, you know, I think as an artist, um, going to Morocco was a was sort of a mind blowing uh, experience. All the beautiful, uh, intricate doorways, uh, the the level of craftsmanship. You know, when you walk around the city, you know. And, uh, and just a level of detail all the way down to a simple doorknob. You, know? you just see, again, the wide variety of these, these imageries that I've created from that whole experience. So, and it's a combination of the two cities, but Essaouira, um, that, uh, that particular city uh, really, really uh, gave me a lot of inspiration. Very old military fortress that's in the ruins. And so, and so it had a leftover ruins with like 16th century uh, Dutch cannons all lined up, you know, on top of close to a 40 to 50 foot wall, you know, so looking down on the Atlantic coast. So what I started to do is to take that same symbols of ruins and cannons and start to incorporate this into what I call the fortification series. And so I started to learn a little bit more about that particular uh, base or the, the old city, uh, the old fortress that was there. And it's based on, uh, you know, historical, you know, fortification design. So, so basically, what I'm doing is, um, it's kind of taking that, those symbols, you know, of the, the cannon, and so sort of you're looking sort of right at it. And it's a good example here. And then from the handmade paper, I'm able to just simply do a lot of uh, different techniques of scribing, scratching building texture to it to kind of get these uh, imagery to come out come to life so and so clearly you can just see you know those type of cannons and walls along with playing around with the fortification uh, or the fortified grid like an area view grid of these uh, these different patterns that you oversee when you go across any type of maps so and so that along with the archways and doorways and intricate uh, you know, ruins of doorways and, and archways. All of the beautiful uh, architecture and the bricks, you, the colors. It's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful city of Marrakesh and Essaouira. And among the other uh, cities that I would love to get a chance to, uh, to venture off because they all have their own unique uh, designs and aesthetics. So all of my uh, pieces on handmade paper, these are all like studies to kind of move towards back to my, you know, my larger size uh, works on canvas. And so, so this is ex some examples here. Again, the same sort of design of that cannon and the fort fortified grid uh, right in the middle, kind of bearing down onto the cannon, looking deep inside, and then you can clearly see that, that design. So let's go a little closer there. I'll start to research on, you know, like area views of fortified structures. And so, so basically what you see is like, like a, uh, you know, the structure wall of the old city and then surrounding it is the new city. But it's at night and it's almost like when you fly, you know, on a plane and you're coming in to the airport, you can see the grid and the lights of a city. And so this is what I was trying to get that point across, pretty much coming into Marrakesh. And, uh, you know, this is another sort of step in, in, my, in this direction with these uh, large scale, you know, um, producing work you know, on a grid type of abstract basis. So, so let me quickly move here and you can just quickly see this one. It's another one in a different color from the fortification series. And so, a little close there. Yeah, that's really nice. There we go. Now, now from the beyond the fortification series, I was able to expand now into different directions with this technique. And so you can see where I'm taking the different shapes of handmade paper now and joining them together to form another another object. And so, so these are just like some examples of, of that process. And now incorporating a lot of 
you know, wood imagery, wood design, and, and among other stuff that I'll probably end up doing in the near future. So, and so one of my materials is using, you know, using handmade gesso. But in this case, with these handmade paper works, I, sub I substituted uh, the handmade gesso with Elmer's glue. And so what I like about Elmer's glue is um, that it's super durable and it's a texture builder for me, which I love texture. And, um, but it also, you know, it glues and seals everything up. And so basically I can build texture from this and, and then I can just add my techniques and, and gilding right on top of that and do my shellac techniques right on top of it. And so, and again, this piece here, multiple handmade paperworks joined together. And now let's get a close up of this. Yeah. And I just want to focus on this piece here. This is a brand new piece I did uh, this year. And, uh, and so I, uh, I dedicate this piece uh, to uh, one of my favorite artists and a lot of the African American uh, abstract uh, painters um, that I, you know, I, I, some of them I, I personally know. And, uh, and so this gentleman by the name of Ed Clark, I had the pleasure of meeting him and uh, and so I sort of dedicate this piece to him because he he recently passed away uh, late last year so, and uh, his studio was in Detroit and that's where I'm from and uh, and so I, I felt a, a deep connection with him and his family and uh, you know living in Detroit and being and being in Detroit so so I dedicate this piece to Ed Clark so let's just take a quick look at this lots of detail and again, for me to expand out now using these, these, these popsicle sticks and creating all kinds of very unique uh, shapes and designs from this, which is fascinating. And so I'm eager to go larger. So I just don't know how big I'm going to get with doing this technique, but I want to try to go as big as I can on some of these new works. So. And I just want to talk about this brand new piece I just produced uh, uh, a few days ago. And, uh, so the title of this piece is called The Gateway uh, of uh, Internal Souls. And so I created this piece because, because of what's been going on today. And of course, we're dealing with this pandemic situation and the, the amount of uh, lives lost. And so I just kind of wanted to create something to, to kind of reflect uh, the loss of life the hundreds of thousands of people have lost their life due to COVID-19. And so, uh, and, and also, you know, with some of the people who actually had to die alone. And so, so I sort of imagine this piece as a sort of a sanctuary uh, entrance, you know, for these people crossing to that next, that next line, you know. Beautiful uh, texture from the glue and multiple pieces of popsicle sticks to form this structure and a beautiful entryway uh, right there. So. so this is about 22 by 30. So I'm, I'm very, very pleased with this. And again, this is more another mock-up to, to a next uh, version that's gonna be a, a lot larger, so. Yeah, okay, it's a book I produced showing decades of, 10 years of, of the work that I've done. And uh, so it's kind of give you you know, a good opportunity to see the work that I've done uh, over the past 10 years. And this particular piece here that's in front of the book, this is kind of like my statement piece, the, the basically the formation of the fortification series. And so, so I, when I did this piece, I think this was the one that kind of set the stage for, um, you know, these works on handmade paper, which I truly, truly enjoy. So, so I just made that as my feature uh, piece on my coffee book. All right. Okay, so um, so I look forward to your questions uh, and try to get as many uh, questions answered. And, and I know I didn't have enough time to kind of go through each and every piece because telling these stories is very long. So, and my time is short with this camera. So, <laughs> anyway, um, thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the near future. Maybe to come and come see me in person for a studio visit. Okay. Take care. Great. That was really great. <laughs> I know that um, that was the first time you had sort of done one of these videos, and I, and I have to say it, it looks it looks fantastic. Um, and it was such a it was such a 
treat for the eyes, all of it, from sort of beginning um, to end. Um, and um, to be taken through um, your various inspirations, um, you know, is, is wonderful to get that kind of intimate a glimpse into your process and into, into your inspiration, really um, just wonderful. And that the gateway of, of, um, of, of souls, um, something so beautiful, at once so beautiful, but also so sober um, as well. And so, um, relevant. Um, anyway, I know that there are lots of questions, um, and so I'd like to, to move to that. Um, and to help us do that um, tonight, we have Joanna Castro with us, um, and she is the consultant for special projects at NOMA, um, and she will be tonight's moderator. So Joanna, you're up. You have to unmute, Joanna. You're still muted. Yeah. There we go. Okay. There you go. All righty. Well, thank you, Nidia. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, it's great to see familiar faces, artists, um, two previous open studio artists, Wilhelmina and Uniqua. Gary, great to see you. We miss thank not being you. able to be there. Um, <laughs> as several of us have been to your, to your studio as part of okay. uh, the Uptown Art Stroll. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have here a question from Liz Ritter, who also happens to be chair of Community Board 12 Parks and Culture. Liz, would you like to ask the question? Yeah, um, well, first, I, I loved having a second peek at your studio, having stopped by there um, during an art stroll a couple of years ago. It was lovely. Um, I'm curious, what made you decide to use popsicle sticks as a medium? You know that's um, that's a that's a that's a kind of a good question because I was wondering why I did it as well. <laughs> it kind of happened by accident because uh, you know I was kind of working on you know working on one of the smaller works and um, and you know I had some popsicle sticks in a box and all of a sudden I decided to uh, I, I just I decided to use it. I just started to kind of experiment with it a little bit and then. But what really got, what really got me going was, you know, I was able to glue it down. And again, with the Elmer's glue, it's 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 such a tight bond, and it it it, it really works well with paper. And uh, and it really just sort of, you know, it, it kind of I felt safe with it. And so uh, I think that's how it all got started. And uh, and so I you know I think from my early works uh, using popsicle sticks. Um, I didn't know what to expect, you know, but uh, but realizing that, yeah, you know, I said, you know, this it works, you know, and then I just started to kind of um, start to push it a little further and see how far I can go with it, and uh, and again, uh, I think I got real comfortable with it, and then now it's I just decided to sort of let this be part of uh, of the work, and what I like about it is that you would never know that it's actually a popsicle stick because I actually gilded it all the materials right on top, so which is very nice. Yeah, I, I also um, just oh, wanted to oh. say that having spent a lot of time in Tunisia, Jerusalem, other places with old cities and yeah. Medinas, it's really, really interesting to see this representation of that. It's just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Very, very nice. So there are lots of beautiful, great comments. Um, so you have quite a number of fans here, Gary, uh, Wilhelmina Grant, who did um, our first open studios. These Thursday events are marvelous. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Color and texture are very important to you or, or come across as very important. Can you tell us why? Color and texture. Um, you know, I, I just think that, um, I think as an artist, um, I think you always want, to, I think we've always been searching for, you know, your own sort of personal style and your own sort of unique uh, techniques. And so, and so I, you know, I was thinking maybe because of the, of the, the experiences that I've done with like frame restoration and using these sort of non, non-traditional materials and got so comfortable with it. And so, 
that kind of allowed me to kind of branch out and then really start to kind of use uh, uh, a lot of color. But the type of color, unfortunately, is not the typical color of like regular paint because I'm using like shellac and some other dyes to kind of replace that as, as the color. But, um, you know, with, with these colors, I can pretty much achieve a high density and character of these, of these colors. And uh, with texture, I, I, you know, to me, you know, there's nothing but joy uh, of doing something with, with texture. And I think this again coming from, uh, from my restoration experience because, uh, you know, I said working on a giant ornate frame that is like heavily gilded with all ornaments and a lot of texture. And, and so to go back and sort of restore that, you have to, you know, find a way to duplicate that. And I think, I think that's where all that's coming from because I worked on, you know, large scale uh, frames uh, that had a lot of texture and then gilding right on top. And so, so basically I'm just kind of using those, those same techniques uh, and I just basically just, you know, let that bleed all into my work. And, uh, and I, I just, I enjoy it, you know, and, uh, and it's becoming part of my, my stable work. And, uh, and I just can't go without it. <laughs> Lots of texture. Good answer. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're having here from Rosina Parsnik, who I believe will be doing um, studios a little bit uh, in a couple of weeks. And she said, beautiful work, rich, layered, evocative. Um, so again, really okay. beautiful comments. We also have a real treat with us because Nydia, as you might know, is an art historian. Um, so she mm. always has very interesting questions. And I believe hers is the next one. Thank you, Joanna. Um, I, I had a question about um, your experience in Morocco when you were there. Um, did you find that you were sketching? Did you find that you were photographing? What was your process from, from that point to what you produced um, in your studio? Well, well I think the, um, well, I mean, the most important thing I had uh, while I was there was my camera. and. Uh, and uh, and so it was great that, that I was able to kind of you know take lots and lots of uh, photographs of of practically uh, a lot of things that that really uh, at least I find it was inspiring. So uh, and so that was kind of like my catalog for reference. Uh, once I started to kind of develop this handmade paperwork uh, after afterwards. So uh, but again, I think just going through the whole experience of being there, in Marrakesh and Esaria. Um, most of it came from the photographs, but then most of it came from my just, you know, after that whole experience, I think I just kept having a lot of, a lot of imagery and a lot of information, um, in my head and it just kind of, it just stuck with me. And even after that, uh, you know, several weeks, months after that, I continued to, to start having all kinds of, uh, you know, different uh, imagery. And then I had to quickly jot most of the stuff down and then, and then when I finally found the material, which is the handmade paper, uh, it was the opportunity now to kind of bring out, to bring this stuff uh, to life. So. Mm, interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next question comes from Christine Gonda. I, I hope I'm pronouncing Christine's name correctly. Yes. Go ahead, Christine. Hi. Um, well, I, I, First of all, congratulations. Your work is amazing. Um, Thank you. And I love to see the, the way it developed. Like to me, I could see the archeology span uh, right there um, mm -hmm. with your work, but that gateway um, is so profound that I was wondering how you plan or if you even plan um, to deal with your feelings as they relate to what's happening right now? Like, will, will that lead you to another piece? Um, because that piece is so, so powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a collector or I wish I had money and could buy it. I'd buy it like that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm an out of work lower Manhattan resident that is getting back into doing art after many, many years and, mm -hmm. and loving being on these things. So thank you. But I just wondered if your feelings are like, 
how you deal with that as a person, if that well, makes sense. Uh, yeah, it, it, may, it makes sense. Um, you know, I think uh, when I produced the piece, and I, this was like last week when I produced it, and uh, because again, you know, again, I've just been like relying on my smaller works. And so, um, you know, and then, you know, after having that tremendous amount of experience with the smaller works, and then some of the larger works, uh, I just put the paper down and then I had a little sketch. I said, let me just do another one. And then it all started to sort of come together. And then um, I just kind of let my mind just kind of flow with it and then develop it. Uh, and then once it's done, um, then I would take a few minutes to kind of look at it and then, and then start to figure out uh, a title for it. And then, but again, I, the more I kept looking at it, the more it started to feel more of a spiritual type of uh, injury. And then I noticed again with, with, with what's going on uh, with the whole pandemic situation and the, uh, uh, that number of deaths approaching to 100,000. So I started to enter that information in and then that's what I started to kind of, you know, sort of put this uh, piece together, this whole story together regarding the 100,000 uh, plus deaths uh, regarding uh, COVID-19. So, and so, and I think I heard this before from a lot of people about some of this work because not even knowing it that it's it's sort of maybe because of that whole experience it was more, some of the work has a little spiritual connection to it as well so uh and so i heard that quite a bit and so um so i know that this piece uh more than likely will have that type of spiritual uh, uh presence uh, with it and so um and so yeah i hopefully people will resonate to that and uh and will appreciate that well, will that work withstand the uh, elements? Because I could see that as a tribute um, to, to this period, um, as a tribute to the people. Like even the sticks remind me of the vast numbers of people. I, I wondered if you could put that, if someone were to feature that, at a museum or something, if it could be a tribute. Well, I will certainly uh, will pursue that, you know, because, uh, you know, it's nothing like, because I think for artists as well, I mean, we, you know, you know, for me particularly, I, I pretty much draw on, you know, the things that affect me, you know, and so we, we have a lot of things going on right now. So, uh, and so I think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for artists to, tell these stories during these times because uh, this is part of history, you know, and this is something very important to remember because, uh, because these are all sort of tragic events that's been happening, you know, and, uh, and I think artists as, uh, you know, we are the recorders of information and to kind of bring out these, uh, these types of information out to, to a lot of folks and to, and hopefully it will stand the test of time, you know, and, and to remember because, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, this is, again, the situation that we're all in is, uh, it's, it's pretty tragic and uh, it's something that we will never, you know, we'll always, we'll remember it. So, uh, so yeah, I, I just, uh, I think it's important, you know, and I think a lot of artists should take the, initi the initiative to produce work that kind of relates to what's going on today. Thank you. That really was a great question and, and a lot of food for thought. Um, switching gears a little bit from the spiritual to the tangible, um, Gary, as you know, Michelle Orsi um, is also an artist and a printmaker. And I think she has a question about hey. technique. Hey, Gary. Um, I've always been drawn to the material, the materiality of your work and just the tactileness of it. And um, I, I uh, wanted to ask you about the particular, about the, um, the handmade paper and how all of those, I don't know if you, have you ever experienced the paper making process or do you, you, yeah. you procure your papers or do you make them basically? Well, you know, I, I, I know the process and yeah. I, would, I would love to do it, but I just, I mean, it's a messy process, but it's a I messy have process. To it's another and job I, I entirely. Yes. Exactly. That's a totally no, but different you, job. You, you see all of the fibers and there are these things floating around in the vat and then they just come together and, 
and they just form something out of nothing. So there's this transformative quality to it that I really think you you get the way you use it. So it it has a right. memory to it. There's a there's a history involved, and I I, I just it's such a beautiful way. So many people use it in a decorative way or just and you just the way you're using it is so beautiful i appreciate that um and 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 the obviously the textures and how you incorporate all of that well you know i had to give credit you know and again i get this paper from the art store and it's like 140 uh pound weight to it so there's there's a, it's thick layers and so i think that's to me is the saving grace of <laughs> of this, this handmade paper because uh um like I said, and I can, you know, from these, you know, cutouts and the scribing and scratching, um, that again, building texture on the paper itself. And then it can still withstand that. And then add more layers to it by adding color or whatever on top. And then it continues to stay intact. Um, that was a, like a vote of confidence uh, when I got started with this. And uh, because not knowing what, what would happen, whether the paper would disintegrate or, but I threw everything at the paper and it just, it holds up very, very well. And so that gave me a lot of confidence um, to really be able to push all the way to the edge uh, with all my techniques on this paper and it could pretty withstand it and it could hold up. So, uh, so I, you know, I would love to, I would love to produce it myself, but, uh, but I would rather just hurry up and get to the main part, which is to get Paper. Yeah, it's, a, it's I, I did study that a bit. It's an entire life. It's an entire another life. <laughs> yes. But the way you're, yeah, incorporating the history of it, it in, 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 it's very, it's like, it's, it's personhood. It, it seems to become more of an, an object that encompasses all of that time and energy that was spent making even though you didn't actually do it. It doesn't really matter. It's just that you get that history from it. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I, I just, you know, I, I, I just enjoy it. And, uh, and I just look forward to continuing to experiment and to kind of push, uh, you know, all levels uh, with this work and just pretty much introduce as much of my information on it as I can. So. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, now we have another question from Isabel S. Isabel, are you here with us? Yes. Okay, thank you. I think she's muted. Um, I, I'm, I am muted here. There we go, okay. Oh, I was asking, um, what informed your work before Morocco? Well, what informed my work before Morocco? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was already doing a wide variety of works, but you know, particularly a lot of abstract work. So, um, so I think um, I just had already had a like a large palette of techniques and 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 paintings I've done, you know, for for a very long time. So, so um, you know, so when that trip to Morocco took place, I mean, that just simply, you know. It, it sort of just opened new doors and shifted me, shifted me into a different direction. So, uh, um, and so coming out of the, that, that whole experience, and then I, I sort of, I noticed the change in my work, you know, and, uh, you know, my typical other pieces. And then, and even my wife mentioned, like some of the pieces that I produced, she noticed the change as well. And, uh, but then I said, like, when I start producing the, the pieces on paper, then that, that body of work also kind of sort of helped develop uh, my this new sort of style of work on on these handmade paper uh, pieces, and then and so you know being able to take that information now, and then now keep it go back to my sort of standard stuff, you know, just again continuing to expand and sort of build your palette, you know, uh, and so I think that's the beauty of being uh, introduced to something new, and uh, and I know that's going to continue because you know. I continue, you know, we continue to travel when, whenever I'm allowed to travel again <laughs> and see new stuff, you know, uh, that's the key. I think, uh, you know, to go out and see things and see things that's been around for, for centuries. So those, those type of uh, experiences fascinate me. And, uh, and that to me is the greatest amount of information artists can get, you know, and you could just take that information and then, 
you'd be surprised to be able to kind of absorb all that and then be able to create something fantastic. So I think that was the that was the sort of experience uh, uh, coming out of that uh, that particular trip. Okay, thank you, Isabel, and thank you, Gary. Uh, our next question is from Kathy O'Keefe, fellow Uptown artist who has also been part of Noma's Uptown Art Stroll um, Open Studios, and I believe she will be next week's Open Studio. Kathy, take it away with your question. Hi, Gary. Um, Hi. I, I was curious about your use of paint. I know you're not using paint in your current work and you're using varnishes and different things and you have a very interesting palette, but it made, it made me think about enamels and I wondered if, if that was incorporated into your work in any way. You know, uh, I've used enamel like years ago and um, yeah. uh, enamel is not, it's, it's not friendly. <laughs> <I think Yeah. laughs> if you, it's not very friendly. So, uh, I, you know, I, it's just, you know, I like using unusual materials, but then, you know, I like to choose these unusual materials where I, I will have, I at least will maintain control over it. And so I think with enamel is very, very hard to control, if that makes sense. Because, yes. uh, because again, once you pour it out and then it, it kind of flows out, and it's very, I find it very tough to kind of be able to kind of manipulate it and get it to move around. So, uh, yes. and so I think, you know, not having that freedom with that, that will frustrate me and I would just set it to the side. So, okay. Well, thank so, you. But I do, yeah, I do use paint. I use, I use acrylic paint and I kind of add that on top of my, of, of the mediums of some of my works I've done in the past. So, uh, uh, but again, I think certain, certain materials, uh, like enamel um, and you know, like oil paint. You know, it's just, it's just, it's, people can use it, but it's very, it's very tough. It just has a little short limit of flexibility. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're I think coming to the last few minutes of the Q and A. Um, so, if you have any other questions. Comments are also welcome. Um, I have uh, one of my last questions, Gary, is what makes you work in such a large scale? Do you start with a, a small mock-up and then decide this is going to get bigger? <laughs> or is it just, you know what, I, I already visualized this piece being whatever dimensions no. um, they are? Uh Quite honestly, I, I do everything in my in my head, unfortunately. So, uh, and and the, the whole thing is is that I it's I pretty much have treated all of these steps as you know these different steps of process, and I can actually visualize all these different steps in my head, and then then start producing, and then each and every it's almost like. Uh, if I some imaginary book with these information, these instructions, and then just follow each one. And so, and so that's what I do, um, particularly with like my triptych paintings, you know, having three canvases joined together on the floor. Um, but again, I'm, I'm relying on my, my framing experience again, because I've, again, that's, that sort of conditioned me into do, doing this type of work and to be able to, uh, to produce work on a large scale because you have to have a plan and a plan that, that's going to make sense, particularly doing larger work. So, because you can easily get yourself in big trouble, <laughs> you know, dealing with a large piece of work. Uh, and so, you know, after numerous times uh, and trial and error, you know, um, with these, uh, the triptych paintings, and then you get comfortable with the techniques and being able to kind of get the type of results uh, you want. But you still have to kind of go through that that trial and error in the beginning, you know, and learn from your mistakes, you know. So, uh, and so I think I've done that. And so now, I guess so you, you reach a level for me is a reach a level of comfort now to be able to kind of, you know, sort of produce a piece that's even bigger than what I've done because I have all the steps in place. And so what I try to do now from this point up is to again put, apply these simple steps uh, in place. And if I have to double it, then I can actually double it and, or triple it, you know, based on the, the size of the piece. And, uh, 
And so that way, for me, I, is that way you can really control if you have a very, very large piece and you're gonna add texture and add whatever you want onto it and then making sure that's gonna come out and it's gonna come out right, so. So it sounds like it's both a process for you and a challenge. It is, you, and I love, and that's a large scale. Yeah, and it's all a challenge because, um, you know, because I get, you know, I get excited, you know, particularly, you know, being, be, being in front of a large painting and you see it start to come to life. And so, and so, yeah, it is a challenge to really try to push it, uh, uh, you know, push the limits. But in the end, you know, what I do like about it, see, one of the unique things about with the shellac, because, uh, because I have no control over it, you know. Um, once I have the painting laid out on the floor and I pour all the colors onto the surface, there's nothing else I can do. And, and that's the discipline, I think, with, this, with these materials. Uh, I think I, I know these materials so much um, and I know their limits and I know what they can teach me and, and, and to not to overdo it. Because if I overdo it, I get in trouble. So, uh, so I know when to stop <laughs> on the, um, know when to stop on these techniques because, uh, because uh, with shellac, um, it's, it's like a one-way street. You know, once you put it on, you don't, you, you have a certain amount of time to do what you need to do. And then that's going to be it because it's, it's drying up. So, and that's, that's the case with a lot of materials, a lot of paint I materials. Scary. I was actually shocked at how big, when I saw the video, how big that new piece, the, um, mm -hmm. with the X in the middle, how, how large you were able to get that yeah. with the material you were using. <laughs> yeah, it's about 60, uh, 60 by, by 40, uh, about 48 uh, by 60. So, um, so yeah, yeah. So, as I said, it's, it's a gradual process, you know, particularly now that I'm going to try to attempt to go larger with these paperwork. But uh, what I'm running into now is I got so comfortable doing the paperwork and doing all my other techniques. Now, a larger piece like this now, that's like it's handmade paper, but it's heavy. So, <laughs> so now I just have to, you know, now I have to sort of compensate for that. And then now I have to be aware because now uh, there's a little weight to it. And so I, you know, I need to add certain things to make sure now that it's, that it's secure. So, uh, so I say each and every step is a, is a gradual process and, uh, and then just making sure that it's going to come out, it's going to come out the way you want it. So. And so this piece we we saw is your largest piece so far. Is that correct? Well, yeah, well that's one, but I have one larger because my triptychs is like 60 by 108. It's like five feet by nine. But the largest one I've done was the one of the area view of the Marrakesh and the, the black and gray uh, triptych piece that right at the top there. That's uh, that's like that's 60 by uh, 116. So uh, so that's by far the largest, uh, that's the largest piece I've done so far. And I'm going to go larger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Looking forward I to it. To it. So, <laughs> I got a 15, Looking 20. Looking forward to it. So, uh, so I'm going to do something really massive. Ho hopefully I can get it out of the studio. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to ask you that, but I was a little nervous. So like, what, what's what's the uh, exit plan for, for uh, taking pieces out of the studio? Well, see, that's the reason why I do things in triptych because it's not one, even though it's one piece, but it's separated. So that way I can just constantly take one piece at a time and place it into uh, a vehicle and take it where it needs to go. So uh, but to add, you know, for a piece to be one and try to get out of here, no. <laughs> I just can't do it. I'll literally have to roll up the canvas and then unroll it uh, where, where it's gone, which I don't want to do. So, uh, um, so I think separating it and if I do a much larger piece, I'll have to include that into the process to make sure um, that if I, if I ever have to let this, take this piece out for exhibition, uh, I have to make sure that it has to be broken down in, in a way that that's going to uh, make sense uh, to reattach it back. So. Uh, so those are the things I think about uh, in doing extra large, uh, larger works. So, because uh, I, I just hate having a giant piece and you just can't take it anywhere. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So actually our last question of the evening is connected to just that. And it's from Christopher Priori, also Uptown um, visual artist. So Christopher, 
you have the last question of for tonight. Hello, Gary and everyone. It's been really very interesting. Thank and you. I was wondering, I, I went to the website while, while you were speaking and, and looked at the dimensional paintings and I was wondering how do they attach to the wall or do some of them live in floating in frames? How are, <laughs> how are they exhibited? You know, that's a, that's a very good question. And I'm still trying to figure this out because, <laughs> because it, so what I, I found something, uh, I have a little, you know, just, I have a little, uh, this little uh, hook and this hook has a, um, it has a little, uh, a little clip. And so uh, I decided to kind of use these clips and this hook as, as my D-ring for, for hanging these pieces. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, some of the pieces I've done so far, um, you know, it's, I, I'm able to kind of attach it from the back yeah. and I sort of allow some of the handmade pin works to, kind of, to be overlapping. Yeah. The back. Yes. And it has a good bite to it. And so, I, you know, I, it's a temporary measure right now until I figure out how to properly hang it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. But, uh, well, but, I'm happy to I'm happy to kick that around if you want to talk about it as colleagues yeah. sometime. Yeah. yeah. I, I know the I know the D rings you you're talking about. I I have a stash of those. There's a couple different yeah. sizes, and some are are heavier and some are smaller. Exactly. Uh, that's yeah. a good solution. So, yeah. So yeah, I usually rely on my framing experience to kind of come up with these things, but uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it really helps. <laughs> uh, I can uh, see some looking very, very handsome in in white frames floating inside with a lot of white space around them too, yeah. and then they're they're uh, they're friendlier to uh, more traditional collectors. Yeah, and so I I just for now I, you know I would love to do the framing part, but I don't want to do it. I just I I decided to kind of break away. I mean, if I if a piece that I, that I work on that I feel that it really needs one, that I will go out of my way and do one. Um, sometimes I do that for my clients. Uh, I usually will order a frame, and then I used to do uh, I could do a custom frame with the piece itself. I've done that in the past. So, uh, but I only do that only if they if the client really wants it, and I will go out of my way to make that happen. But I would love for you know, you know, have a nice large uh, frame, uh, and again, floating these pieces to be floating. I think it's gonna. A beautiful frame with a white background, nice and clean, and just let this piece sort of pop out on on the on the frame in a, in a beautiful mat. I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. So, I agree uh, with you. Yeah, and Good so I, it. I look forward to seeing that happening. Um, you know, I might end up doing it uh, later on, but uh, right now I'm just I'm enjoying uh, producing the work now, uh, producing the work, and try to build up some little bit of inventory, and then from there we'll see what happens. Good luck with it all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. And um, Gary, as you might know, uh, Christopher was part of the virtual open studios two weeks ago. So it's great yes. to see um, uh, several artists um, ask questions and, and just how it becomes this um, uh, sense of, of, of artist community. Yeah. So questions from like logistics, nitty gritty to what influence do um, and, and, uh, and as such, I think we're coming to an end. So I'm forwarding the mic to Nidia. Um, and thank you so much. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Joanna and Gary and everyone for your really wonderful questions. Um, Gary was really moved, um, by the richness and, and beauty of your work. Um, and also by your sensitivity to your role as artist, observer, documentarian, um, especially during these times. Um, uh, really, really wonderful. Um, I really look forward to when the, we can travel again because I'd love to see what you come up with next um, and see what your next destination is. Um, so now we're gonna move to the sort of final uh, um, question and answer sort of our quick rapid fire question segment. So I think I explained to you the way this works is that I will put up some cue cards with some quick questions that you will answer off the cuff, just whatever comes to mind. It doesn't have to be, you know, more than 10 second answer. Um, don't be scared. Um, it's fun, I promise. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's fun for us. I don't know if it's fun for you, but it's fun for us. All right, 
Are you ready? Okay, right, let's, here we go. Uh, okay. let's do it. Okay. What are you doing to fill your days? What are you doing to fill your days? Yeah. Well, um, well, how about uh, playing with my one and a half year old? <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Okay. <laughs> you have no choice. Right <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, maybe this will be the, similar. What do you consider your greatest achievement? <laughs> well, uh, I have two. Uh, well, I have three. I say my wife and my son and my art. How about that? <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, okay, so maybe this is connected. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Perfect happiness. Um, I'm going to say go back to Morocco. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would love to go back. And uh, because it was, it, that, that's one of my, my that's, a, that's a favorite trip of mine, and I want to try to do it again. I think we would all love for you to go back, because we'd love to see what comes next. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What is on your nightstand these days? Ooh. Well, the only thing that's on a nightstand is uh, a battery charger. <laughs> and <laughs> that's pretty much it. Uh, a battery charger for my phone, and that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> Oh, that's, I, I'm, I'm jealous. My nightstand needs a good cleaning of lots of things that are on it. Well, my All right. wife keeps everything or, organized and I have to follow the rules. So. <laughs> there you go. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so here's one. What is your, or who, who or what is your favorite artist, artwork, or art movement? Oh, favorite artist? And uh, art, artwork. Yeah, one artwork. or the other. Yeah. Can you think of an artist, an artwork, or a movement that you feel, you know, you always go back to something that you love? I, I, I just rely on my the, the heroes. Uh, uh, Jack Whitten, um, he was a personal, he was a good friend of mine. And uh, and I, you know, I just, I, I love Jack Whitten's work. And he's an abstract painter and just, and why, the reason why I love his work because he wasn't afraid to experiment on all levels. And so um, I can appreciate that as an artist and uh, to kind of step outside of art and try to introduce other types of information and, and even scientific information in, in terms of experimenting with work. And so I just, I truly admire uh, Jack Whitten and his, uh, and his work of art, uh, particularly the abstract work. That's great, an answer. Okay. Which historical <laughs> figure do you identify with? Which historical figure do I identify with? Hmm. Oh, which historical figure? Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm going to have to say, um, you know, I, I'm going I'm to say Martin Luther King. I mean, I, I just... Uh, you know, not more, you know, of a, of a presence of, of, of his voice, but I think in terms of art and communicating, you know, and trying to, uh, I think, get people to understand uh, what I'm trying to come across, you know, and I think that's what, uh, at the time, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King was doing as well. So, uh, so I, I look at him uh, to kind of, for me as an artist, to kind of, you know, produce work and then hopefully have that type of uh, visual uh, uh, statement uh, sort of come out into work. That's a fantastic answer. Yeah. Um, okay, you've got two more. These are quick and painless. What is your favorite place in New York City or uptown? Uh, what is my favorite place in New York City? Um, or, or uptown, either. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, I, I, I love, uh, I love downtown, you know, and I love being downtown by the World Trade Center area down there. So, uh, but I, I, I love this area, you know, um, it being, being a home resident now and, and by City College in this area. Uh, it is, a, I kind of look at it as a sanctuary right now because it's, it's just a peaceful, quiet and uh, a nice residential uh, area. Um, uh, so yeah, I just, you know, uptown, this area, and I love downtown. I love going downtown. I love the tall buildings. I'm, I'm a city guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes sense. Okay, final question. 
what is your motto or words to live by? No, nope, no pressure. They're just words to live by. <laughs> My motto, words to live by. Oh. Well, um, I just, my motto is, is to take one step at a time and, and, and treat, uh, treat uh, and I was just say, uh, just each day you treat it as, as a special day. Yeah. You know, you take one day at a time, you know, because, um, you know, as we want to know, we're going through, there's just so much, there's so much going on. And uh, so I think for everybody now, it's just to have a moment of peace and, uh, and have some type of normal sort of self, you know. So, uh, so I try to do that every day, you know, not being bombarded with so much of this, so much information. So take time out for yourself to appreciate uh, outside the weather, you know, birds, the small things in life, you know. Um, that's, that's, that's what I do. And that's what, that's what I think everybody should, should do, is take some that's, time out for you. That's beautiful. I think those are words that we can all um, live by or aspire to live by. Um, those were great. See, it wasn't so bad. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and thanks to all of you um, for joining tonight. And thanks so much to the Juan Pablo Duarte Foundation. Um, and of course, to the Department of Cultural Affairs, Council Member Mark Levine, and the West Harlem, Harlem Development Corporation. Um, and before uh, turning over the mic to uh, Martin, uh, I once again join you, uh, ask you or invite you to join us again next Thursday. Um, and every Thursday after that, we will be here. I look forward to these weekly dates. Um, and I'm uh, thrilled that you're all here again tonight. And I really appreciate all of your questions um, and the dialogue that came out of them. And Michelle has put up on the screen um, a poll that we hope that you will all take a minute uh, to fill out. Um, and I will turn the mic over to Martin now. Martin. Thanks, Maria, and thank you to everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you, Gary Grant, for sharing your wonderful artwork and your studio with us tonight. We want to uh, remind everybody that for the latest in Uptown Artist Opportunities and events by our community partners, please see the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance newsletter on our website, nomanyc.org. That's N-O-M-A-A-N-Y-C dot org. Up next is the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance Census Coloring Contest deadline, which is next Sunday, May 31st. And we invite all of you to join us again next Thursday at 7.30 p.m. That's Thursday, June 4th at 7.30 p.m. for Kathy O'Keefe and her Uptown Arts Studio. We thank Kathy O'Keefe for joining us this evening. And for a glimpse into Kathy's artwork, please see her website, kathyokeefe.com. Next week's uh, open Studio will be sponsored by Pizza Haven, 4942 Broadway and West, 207th Street, in business over 70 years uptown. Nerea? Thank you, Martin. Um, thanks again, everyone. And Gary, thanks so much for your um, inspirational uh, um, work and also your inspirational words uh, to close out this evening rapid fire questions. We really appreciate those. Um, and thanks to everyone. Um, we. We'll see you next Thursday night. Have a good evening and take care, everybody. Thank you.